Hi everybody, it's Christina from Pretty Distressed. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a kitchen table or dining room table makeover. I'm gonna be sanding down the top and using a Verithane stain called Sun Bleach that gives you a really pretty driftwood look. And then I'm gonna be painting the apron with anti Sloan chalk paint in old white and really, really distressing that up. As always, I will leave links to all the products I use down in the description box, so make sure you check that out. If you're new here, thanks for stopping by. Please make sure you subscribe before you leave if you wanna see more of my videos and more of my stuff and hit that little bell right next to the subscribe button and I'll send you notifications anytime I upload a video. All right, I think I got everything covered, so let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So today I'm gonna let you peek in on a project that I'm working on for myself. This is a kitchen table that I'm redoing. Um, it was a dumpster dive, someone in my neighborhood was throwing it out. It's a beautiful pottery barn table, but it was in super rough shape. It had scratches and stuff all over it. I'm gonna do something a little different that I've never done before. Um, I'm really into that sun bleached look, like that driftwood look that you kind of see with restoration hardware. And like if you go into home goods right now, you'll see that look everywhere. So it's kind of gray, but it still lets some of that natural wood tone come through. It's a bare thing, it's called sun bleach. I'm gonna be using that today to stain the top once I sand everything down. And then I'm gonna be using my favorite Annie Sloan chalk paint in my favorite color, <laughs> old white. I know it gets really repetitive. I know I use it a lot, but it's just so versatile and so easy to work with. This is gonna be really distressed and shabby. It's gonna look like it's been outside for years and have a lot of wear and tear. Please remember when you're painting furniture, it is totally subjective. Is that right? Or do I wanna say objective? Let's Google it. <laughs> yes. Subjective, based on or influenced by personal feelings, tastes, or opinions. The, the whole point of doing it is to do it to your personal style and to your liking. So if you don't like stuff super distressed, you can always add more paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom you in and let's get started on this project. So I'm gonna start today's project by stripping off the existing finish on the tabletop. I'm gonna be using my DeWalt Random Orbit Sander. There's a bunch of different ones on the market. You can use whichever one you have or whichever one you wanna purchase. You'll also need sanding pads, and it doesn't really matter what brand you use as long as it fits your sander. I like to get packs like these that have a variety of different grits in them. You'll also need a face mask to protect you from dust, as well as goggles and ear protection. And they're really easy to put on. You just line them up with the holes so it'll ventilate properly. I do suggest doing this outside. Even though you have a vacuum, this dust gets everywhere. So if you can do it outside or in your garage or something, I highly recommend doing that. So it's pretty simple. I've just put on a 60 grit pad here and you're just gonna keep going back and forth with the grain until you see that natural wood coming through. This is a little tip I learned from somebody off of YouTube. I wish I could credit them, but I can't remember what video it was I watched. It was a woodworker. And if you put kind of something that's weighted on top like windshield wiper fluid or just something that you have in your garage it kind of helps the process go a little bit faster by putting that on top of the sander so here's what the tabletop looks like after stripping it down with that 60 grit sandpaper we're going to smooth it out a little bit further now so i'm removing that pad and i'm going to insert a 120 grit sandpaper pad on here and this is just going to smooth it out a little bit more when you're doing this you're going to do it just in the same motion as we did with the first sanding pad you could use up to 150 grit just depending on what you have around the house don't go any higher than that though because it'll affect how the stain's going to adhere so again, make sure you're going with the grain. You do the complete tabletop, and I'm just gonna speed it up here a little bit so we can get through it quickly. Next, I'm grabbing my tack cloth to clean up that excess dust before I start staining. So very simple here, just wipe this all up and down and make sure you don't have any dust residue before you start staining. Now I'm ready to stain, so I'm gonna grab my Verithane wood stain and sun bleach. You can pick this up at Home Depot or of course get it on Amazon. And I'm also gonna grab my nitrile gloves as well. Today I'm gonna to use these wiping cloths to put on my stain. You're more than welcome to use a brush. I just prefer to use these because I can dry them out and then simply throw them away. I really don't like cleaning an oil-based product out of a brush. So you're gonna open up your can and stir it. I would recommend not doing this on top of your table. I'm just doing this so that you can see what I'm doing, but do it off to the side so you don't spill like your whole can of stain on your tabletop. 
So to apply, I'm simply dipping my wiping cloth into my can and just spreading the product out onto the wood. Again, going with the grain, just like we did when we sanded. I didn't pre-condition this or pre-treat this wood in any way because I like to have a little bit of an uneven finish. I just think it looks more rustic and there are dings and wormholes and stuff in the top of this table. So I like that look. If you want it to be a little bit more smooth and controlled, you could pre-treat the wood. So I split the tabletop up into three sections. So I'm just doing this front section first and then I did the leaf and then I did the other side. So what you're gonna do is just apply all the stain to this one section and I just let it set for about a minute. This Varathane stain is very pigmented. They claim it's three times more pigmented than any other stain in the market. So you don't need a lot of stain to achieve the color that you want and I was going for a very light washed look. So I just put one really thin coat on, let it set for about a minute, and then I went back and rubbed it off. I'm using a clean wiping cloth just to wipe this down. It's the same thing that I applied the stain with, just grab a new clean one, and here's the excess stain coming off. I was happy after one coat, so I'm just gonna let this dry for about 72 hours before I add my top coat. So in the meantime, I'm gonna grab my Annie Sloan chalk paint in old white and paint the apron of my table. I have a lot of tutorials that go really into depth with using this paint and why I like it. So I'll link those below in the description box and I'll put a few up here in the top corner that you can click on if you want more information on how to work this paint. One of the reasons I love this paint so much is it has very little prep time. It's specifically formulated to paint over a finish like this. All you have to do is clean it up with a little warm water and soap before getting started. This is again gonna be a really distressed look. So I'm only doing one coat of paint today and I'm painting right out of the can. I just stirred it up a little bit, um, but I didn't add any water or anything to thin it out. I'm using a pretty natural bristle brush to apply this paint, which of course I'll link down with all the other products that I use in the description box, so check that out. So I'm gonna paint the entire apron of the table and then I'm gonna let that dry to the touch about two to three hours and then I'm gonna take a very fine sandpaper, this is 400, and I'm gonna fold it up and I'm actually gonna rub this over the entire apron. Sometimes when I do distressing, I just do it on the edges and the detail work, but for this look, since it's so flat, and I'm going for a really distressed look, I'm actually gonna gently rub this 400 grit sandpaper all over the entire apron. Again, this is personal preference. If you don't want yours this distressed, just go a little bit lighter with your hand. In fact, you don't even have to do it on every single part of the apron. You could just do it on the legs. So this is the level of distressing I'm going for here. So I'm just gonna move to the legs and do the exact same thing over here. So I just worked my way around the entire table and I don't have a video of this, but I took a tack cloth and dusted everything, all that residue off. I'm just gonna leave this like this. I am not gonna seal it. You can seal it with wax or a top coat if you're interested in doing that, but I really wanted this chalky finish on the apron, so I'm just gonna leave it be. So now I'm gonna jump back to putting a top coat on the portion of the table that we stained. The first thing I wanna do is get off any dust that accumulated while this was drying. So I'm just gonna take that tack cloth and wipe the entire surface down. I am gonna be using the General Finishes High Performance Flat Top Coat to seal this tabletop today. You're just gonna stir this up really well. I use a foam applicator from the hardware store to apply this. These are really cheap and I find it's the easiest way to apply it. If you wanna use a brush, you're more than welcome to. I am doing a water-based top coat on top of here and we did use an oil-based stain, so you do wanna make sure that you wait at least 72 hours to put the top coat on. It's just a must when you're doing a water top coat on top of an oil-based uh, stain. And the reason I select this particular top coat is because a water-based top coat, you can get a really flat finish. And I personally just don't like a really shiny or glossy or satin finish. I want it as flat as possible. And to do that, you have to use a water-based one. This is super easy to apply. Just break it up in sections. So again, I'm gonna start with this first section and I just get a little bit of product on my brush and I'm just gonna go with the grain and go from one end to the other and just apply that product, keep a wet edge. And I do like to do one smoothing motion before I move on to the next. This product, you don't wanna go back and rework something that you've done. So really keep an eye out for drip marks and any spots that you've missed during the process because you really don't wanna go back and try to fix them later because it's gonna make a big mess. This has quickly become one of my new favorite products and I've used it in a lot of videos lately. So I'm gonna link those below in the description box as well as put a couple here um, up here in the right hand corner. So check those out. 
Dry time for this top coat is about two hours in ideal conditions, which is about 70 degrees Fahrenheit with 50 to 70% humidity. And here's a little tip for you in between coats. You can save this foam brush and just stick it in a Ziploc bag, squeeze all the air out of it, and you can reuse it and reuse it until you're done. To make sure that it's dry, you're just going to lightly sand it with a 220 to 320 sanding pad. And if dust kicks up, it's ready for you to recoat. If you don't get any dust kicking up, you need to wait. If you sand this too early before it's dry, you're going to get a really cloudy finish and there's really nothing you can do to fix that, but strip the entire piece. So when in doubt, just let it dry a little longer, even let it go 24 hours. Definitely don't rush the dry time on the top coat. Sand the entire tabletop going with the grain and then you're going to take a tack cloth again, wipe off that residue and then you're ready to recoat and we're going to use the exact same technique we used on the first coat. General Finishes recommends doing at least three coats and that's what I did on this table so once this was dry I just repeated my whole process again. I didn't record that third coat but I did do it and you're more than welcome to do more coats if you feel comfortable doing that. It's just going to give you added durability. So this project is now complete. Just to remind you what we started with, here is what the table looked like when I first got it, and here it is now. And I paired it with these metal bistro chairs that I got from Amazon.com. I'll link those below. I love these. They're so easy to wipe up if you have kids. Um, I think they're just a super go-to, and they're actually really affordable. I hope you guys enjoyed following this little project along with me. I hope it inspires you to make over your own table. If you like what you saw today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up before you leave or leave me a comment below. You can also follow me over at Instagram at pretty underscore distressed. I do a lot of stories over there and a lot of behind the scenes stuff that you guys will see in my projects before they go live on YouTube. Thanks for watching today and I'll see you next time.